Hi, this is James from Genie Developer Central, and in this video, you're going to learn how to send authenticated requests through Postman using a JWT token. So if you already have a JWT token generated for a service that you want to use, then you can probably skip this first part. But first of all, I want to show you how you would maybe go about generating a JWT in the first place. So I've got a small application running on my desktop at the moment, and it comprises of two endpoints basically. Uh, there's first a hello world endpoint, which as you can see is unauthenticated. I can just literally browse to that as I win. Um, but there is also another endpoint which is pretty much the same, but just has API in front of it. And it won't show you anything if you don't supply it with a JWT. So this is likely the problem that you've come up against. You want to test these endpoints that you have, but you just have no way of actually telling Postman what the uh, JWT is. Um, but let's generate one first. So this application also provides us with a login endpoint as well. And it only accepts post requests. Uh, so I'm just going to create a new uh, post login request here. And I'll just save it in my local requests folder. So I want to post some data to our URL, uh, which in this case is localhost and login. And we need to send some JSON data to that. So uh, if you've seen previous videos in this series, you'll have seen, first of all, how to create a post request, but also how to send that JSON data to. Uh, so I'm literally going to come over to here and go to raw and set JSON data in there. So I need to supply a username of admin and also a password. Of admin so this is just something that's been configured in the app for testing purposes oops I made a typo in the address there so it's localhost if I send that across you'll see I get a response and with a bit of other information I get the JWT token back from that login route and I'll show you a quick tip in a while how to actually decode the data that's stored in this JWT but first I want to show you how you would supply this information in Postman so if I just make a copy of that JWT that's been generated and the other endpoint that we wanted to access, which was the authenticated one, was API Hello World. And if I send that post request as it is, let's just clear the uh, body out of there. And click Send. Uh, we should see the response comes back saying, as we did in the browser, saying that there's uh, no token available to us. So post will get, uh, get will probably be the actual endpoint that we need to make the request. So now that we have our token, we can actually supply that to Postman. And the way we do that is in this authorization tab. So in the authorization tab, if we just go to the bearer token option in the type of authorization, then you get a token box where you can actually just paste in the JWT that we generated in the first step. Uh, and if you have your pre-generated JWT from another service that you're testing, uh, this is where you would put in the token. And now that we've done that, we can actually now access that protected endpoint uh, just by clicking send. And that should send the request, the get request with the JWT. And as you can see now, it's coming up as authorized and returning a different response. So just to double check that, if we were to remove the token and send it, uh, we should get an error saying that there's no token there. So whilst this is kind of Postman's standard way of sending a JWT token, and it is a way that a lot of APIs would actually receive the token as well, um, it may not be the way that your particular API that you're testing is configured. Because what we're actually doing here by setting this type of bearer token in the authorization tab is all Postman's doing is creating a header for you of authorization and passing in the JWT that you give it prefixed with the bearer keyword. So if this process does fail for you while you're trying to test your API, what you might want to do is just take the authorization header off and customize that yourself in the header section. So for example, it might be something like X API key. That's something quite common that's also used. And maybe you just have to paste your JWT straight into the header value as such. So just to wrap up, while we were looking at JWTs, I thought it'd be worth showing you a quick way just to verify that the JWT is getting the information that you want inside it. Because although it looks like a random string of letters and characters, there's some quite useful information that's contained within a JWT. Uh, and you can actually decode it yourself. If you go to a browser window such as Chrome and head on over to your console, we can actually just extract the values from the JWT um, using a bit of array destructuring 
um, you can actually just say, here's the string from our JWT, split it on the dot into its component parts, but we only really want to look at the payload, which is the string in the middle. So if I save that, and you can see payload is just now that string. And if you convert it from base64 by using the A to B function, you'll see this is the actual information that's held inside our JWT. And the request that we sent, obviously, it signed it with uh, this information. So this one's not particularly interesting, but it does have things like the expiration of the JWT. So if you're getting an error while you're trying to send it, you can obviously decode it and see when that JWT is supposed to expire. So I hope you found that tutorial useful. If you did, just drop me a comment below and like the video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more web development tutorials and tips.